friends today i am discussing the multiple choice questions of physiology paper 2 of dr ysr university of health sciences examination held on 13th december 2023 this set of mcqs are obtained from set b of the physiology paper 2 Question number one, Addison's disease is due to A, hyperadrenalism, B, hypoadrenalism, C, increased secretion of melanin, D, increased adrenal androgens. As we know, hyperadrenalism produces Cushing's syndrome. Increased melanin may be there after some after the increased melanocyte stimulating hormone that is coming in the hyposecretion, but anyway, that is not the main thing. Then increased adrenal androgens, that is not, that is a virilism, that is a uh, another aspect. The answer is hypoadrenalism. The, I have given the references at the bottom of each Page, either Genong or Guyton, I have referred the Genong 2010 edition, Guyton of 2021 edition. Question number two, the trigger to initiate the contractile process in skeletal muscle is A, calcium binding to tropomyosin, B, calcium binding to troponin, C, ATP binding to the myosin cross bridges, D, potassium binding to myosin. The calcium binding to troponin trigger that the excitation contraction coupling is initiated. Hence, the answer is the calcium binding to troponin. It is referred to Guyton base 100. Question number three, repolarization in a motor nerve is due to A, influx of chloride ion, B, efflux of potassium ion, C, efflux of calcium ion, D, influx of sodium ion. As a matter of fact, it is the repolarization of either a sensory nerve or a motor nerve that in the action potential, it is repolarization process is due to the efflux of potassium ion. By this time, the sodium channels are closed, the potassium channels open up, because they are late or they are delayed in opening. So hence the answer is efflux of potassium ion, which brings back the uh, depolarization, uh, which is produced by the sodium entry. You can refer to any book. Here I have referred uh, Genong, page 85. Question number four. The ends of action filaments are anchored to the A, M line, B Z line, C perimysium, D sarcoplasmic reticulum. I read the stem again. The ends of action filaments are anchored to the. There is no word, or there are no words like action filaments in the medical literature. So. I understand there is a spelling mistake, but as a student, I feel that it is not the correct stem. Hence, the if this is with this stem, there is no appropriate answer for this. Hence, this question should be or uh, cannot be uh, should be deleted. However, if we consider the action, whatever action filaments, rather, if we consider if it is a actin filaments, then the answer is. Jet line. They are anchored to jet lines. So it is just for academic purpose. However, I will see that the question number four is not, do not have the correct stem. Hence, it is not a correct uh, correct thing. And uh, one should ask, ask for it or one should contest it. Question number five. Where does fertilization takes place in the A, uterus, B, cervix, C, ovary, D, ampulla of the fallopian tubes. 
the fertilization takes place in the ampulla of the fallopian tubes, not in the uterus, not in the cervix, not in the ovary, because uh, the the spermatozoa has to pass through these these things and reach the fallopian tubes, and the ova has to reach because of the effects of the uh, oxytocin and other um, utero stimulants. So there is a, they will reach at this site, the ampulla, the fallopian tubes is the right response. Question number six. Which of the following increases the rate of deposition and decreases the rate of absorption of bone? I read the question again. Which of the following increases the rate of deposition and decreases the rate of absorption of bone? A. Elevation of parathyroid hormone concentration. B. Elevation of estrogen concentration. C. Elevation of extracellular hydrogen ion concentration. D. Reduction of a mechanical stress on the bone. The elevation of the parathyroid hormone increases the osteoclastic activity, hence they, uh, it, it increases the rate of resorption of the bone so that the calcium is mobilized. Hence, it's not the correct response. Elevation of extracellular hydrogen ion, again, that's, that's not true. You can just see here, acidosis decreases the bone mineral density. Then in case of the mechanical stress on the bone, reduction in the mechanical stress on the bone decreases the, cal the calcium deposition or cal rate of deposition and decreases the rate of absorption. There is a, a total uh, decrease in the, the, they may go for osteoporosis. So that is another thing. It's a reduction of mechanical stress. So there are experiments in which one limb was uh, plastered casted and another limb was left with. The other limb has grown and this thing. So this is not also the correct response. Estrogen decreases the bone resorption by inhibiting the osteoclastic activity. Hence, in postmenopausal women, there is a osteoporosis because inhibition of the osteoclastic activity was absent in a postmenopausal woman. Hence, there is more osteoclastic activity, more osteoporosis. Regarding the, the rate of deposition, there are no reports or I did not find uh, the mention of a rate of deposition in either Genong or Gaita. Hence, we do not have the correct response for question number six. So question number six is also another uh, question which uh, do not have the answer. Here I read, estrogens prevent osteoporosis by inhibiting the stimulatory effects of certain cytokines on osteoclasts. Refer to Genong, uh, page 371. Question number seven. Example of neuroendocrine secretion. A, growth hormone. B, cortisol. C, oxytocin. D, prolactin. Growth hormone cortisol and prolactin are the because of the stimulation of the hormones and uh, they are released because of the hormones. Oxytocin is synthesized in the hypothalamus and is released in the neurohypophysis through this uh, hypothalamus hypophysial set of neurons. So this is the correct response. The oxytocin is the neuroendocrine secretion. Question number eight. Factors stimulate growth hormone is A, increased blood glucose, B, exogenous growth hormone, C, ghrelin, D, testosterone. Increased blood glucose level may suppress the growth hormone secretion. Exogenous growth hormone may suppress the growth hormone secretion. Ghrelin is a hormone secreted by the stomach, which is increased during fasting 
or ghrelin activates the growth hormone secretion so that there is a additional growth. Then testosterone also stimulates the growth hormone secretion. Hence, there are two correct responses. C, ghrelin is a correct response. D, testosterone is a correct response. I have referenced here Guyton page 3, 935, Genong 385, where they mentioned the fasting. In fasting, ghrelin levels are increased. D, testosterone. In Genong, it is mentioned on page 385 that testosterone and estrogens stimulate the growth hormone secretion. Hence, there are two correct responses in this. Question number nine. Hunger center is A, ventromedian nucleus hypothalamus, B, lateral hypothalamic nucleus, C, anterior hypothalamic nucleus, D, posterior hypothalamic nucleus. The answer is the lateral hypothalamus or lateral hypothalamic nucleus is the uh, feeding center or the hunger center. The ventral medium is the, the satiety center. Uh, remaining parts, the anterior and posterior, they participate in a different perspective. Hence, the answer is B, lateral hypothalamic nucleus, Guyton, page 883. Question number 10. Episodic memories are formed in the A, amygdala, B, hippocampus, C, neocortex, D, uncus. The episodic memories are formed in the hippocampus. Hence, the answer is B, hippocampus. You can refer to Genong 290. Question number 11. Sperms become motile in a. Prostate, B. Epididymis, C. Vasodifference, D. Seminal vesicle. The spermatozoa which are formed in the seminiferous tubules, when they enter another uh, coiled tube of the epididymis, they will get matured in this epididymis and they become motile. Hence, the answer is B, epididymis is the correct response. You can refer to Guyton page 1013 or Genong page 404. Question number 12. Failure rate is maximum in which of the following a contraceptive method? Barrier. B, contraceptives. C, IUD. D, oral contraceptives. I read the options again. A, barrier. B, contraceptives. Contraceptives are all contraceptives. So then there is no specific contraceptive mentioned here. Hence, this question is not having a proper answer because of the presence of the uh, contraceptive, a vague response. So there cannot be a, a proper answer. Uh, therefore, this question uh, can be challenged. Question number 13. Sleep spindles and case complexes are seen in dash stage of sleep in EEG. NREM sleep, B, stage 2 NREM sleep, C, stage 3 NREM sleep, D, stage 4 NREM sleep. K complexes and the sleep spindles appear in the stage 2 of the NREM sleep. Since we have two options, one NREM sleep, yes, sleep spindles and key complexes are seen in NREM stage of sleep because we have two stages of sleep, NREM and REM. If a student thinks in that way, the option A is also right. Then the exact Appearance of the sleep spindles and the key complexes do happen in stage two of the NREM sleeps. Hence, there are no proper, uh, the responses are not properly balanced. So both can be correct. Uh, the candidates may challenge this. Question number 14. Mossy fibers of the cerebellum make direct synaptic connections with 
dendrites of the granule cells, exons of the granule cell, dendrites of Golgi cell, D, the Purkinje cells. The mossy fibers, they project, they come from all other parts of the body and uh, all the proprioceptive inputs coming from all parts of the body, they reach the, the uh, cerebellum and the, the deep cerebellar nuclei receives the first input there, excitatory input. Then it will stimulate, it will stimulate the granule cell soma. However, the, there is no mention of the granule cell of the soma. So, and then they also give collaterals to the dendrites of the granule cells. And these collaterals form uh, what are called glomeruli. And these are the correct response. Now, the mossy fibers in the of the cerebellum make direct synaptic connections. I will not agree with the term direct synaptic connections because the direct synaptic con connections are to the soma, however, a collateral may make a synaptic connection with the dendrites of the granule cells. However, I take this A as a response. Uh, even one, if one, one can challenge, one can go on because if they refer to the new new edition of the uh, Genong, uh, you have both the answers, the, the soma as well as the dendrites. I just read this thing. A proprioceptive input to the inferior olivary nuclei come from all over body. On the other hand, mossy fibers provide a direct proprioceptive input from all parts of the body, plus input from the cerebral cortex via pontine nuclei to the cerebellar cortex. They end on the dendrites of granule cells in a complex synaptic groupings called glomeruli. This is from Genong, page 256. Hence, I take up the uh, answer a is a correct response for question number 14. Question number 15, the afferent climbing fibers to the cerebellum originate from A, superior olivary nucleus, B, inferior olivary nucleus, C, superior vestibular nucleus, D, inferior vestibular nucleus. The answer to this question is B, inferior olivary nucleus, which reaches the cerebellum and climbs the Purkinje cells, then they will make a synaptic contact with the dendrites of the Purkinje cells. So that's the correct response. The climbing fibers are, are to the cerebellum originate from inferior olivary nucleus. This is the correct response. Question number 16, Golgi tendon organ determines static length, muscle action, muscle tension, dynamic length. The static length and the dynamic length are monitored by the muscle spindles. The static fibers are dynamic fibers which are there in the muscle spindle. The muscle action Everything is a muscle action. Either a contraction or a tension is a muscle action. The specific term used here is a muscle tension. The Golgi tendon organs are activated by the tension created in the tendon. They are located, the spray nerve endings located in the tendon. They are, that is why they are called Golgi tendon organs. These receptors are activated by the tension or the muscle tension to prevent excessive stretch of the muscles and uh, to prevent the rupture of the muscles because of the excessive tension developed. You can refer to guidance 690. Next, question number 17. Prosopagnosia is A, inability to recognize faces, B, inability to recognize words, C, inability to recognize sound. D, inability to recognize smell. Inability to recognize smell is uh, anosmia. Inability to recognize sound is uh, auditory agnosia. 
inability to recognize words is a dyslexia or alexia. A is the correct response. It is inability to recognize faces. The response is A, inability to recognize faces. Question number 18. Large number of taste buds are on the walls of D. A, circumvallate papillae. B, fungiform papillae. C, foliate papillae. D, palate. So the large number of taste buds are located in the circumvallate papillae. The remaining parts are there in a fungi form and foliate papillae. Hence, the response, correct response is A, circumvallate papillae. Question number 19. One decibel represents an actual increase in sound energy of 1.26 times, 2.26 times, 3.26 times, 4.26 times. The answer is 1.26 times. Question number 20. Ethitosis is characterized by continuous slow writhing movements. Rapid voluntary dancing movements, involuntary flailing movements, slowness of movements. Bradykinesia or hypokinesia are slowness of movements. Involuntary flailing, flailless, flailing movements are known as a, present in hemiblismus. So these are ballistic movements. Rapid voluntary movements or dancing movements are voluntary ones. They are not. The continuous slow writhing movement is the correct response. Hence, ethetosis is characterized by continuous slow writhing movements. A is the correct response. I have referred to Genong and Guyton, Genong's Review of Medical Physiology, 23rd edition, 2010. Guyton, Textbook of Medical Physiology, 14th edition, 2021 edition. It is an international edition by Holland Hall. Hence, I have five questions which are not appropriate, which would benefit the students. Either they have improper stems or they do not have the correct responses or there may be double responses. So here I mentioned question number four, stem of the question is wrong as X and filaments. There is nothing like X and beta filaments. Question number six. This is regarding the calcium deposition or calcium rate of calcium deposition and calcium rate of calcium resorption. There are no correct responses available. Question number eight. Regarding the hunger, ghrelin and testosterone, both of them, they are, they are, they stimulate the growth hormone. Question number 12, there is no correct response since it is regarding the contraceptive. The option B is a contraceptives. So the word contraceptives, it's not mentioned. Hence again, it is a, this question needs to be challenged. Question number 13, there are two answers. Answer A and answer B are correct. Therefore, my dear friends, you can take this thing whenever opportunity comes to represent your uh, point, uh, I have given the references to each of the questions I have answered uh, so that that will help you. Hope this is uh, useful to you. Thank you. Thank you all.